Hey there. Hello, hello. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Hope you're having a good time today and you're ready to go. Today we're talking about service design. We'll give like, um, just a minute for everyone to get warmed up. Uh, I see you guys in the chat here. Um, what I like to start with is um, a little bit of a icebreaker question. I got this fantastic book here. So I would love to see you, your answer in the chat. Uh, I, that book claims that there are two kinds of people in the world. Uh, so I want to pick like one of my favorite like image and I uh, will ask yourself, who are you? I know that as designer, we use this a lot. So do you, are you guys more the earbuds type? Or are you guys more the in-ear type? What's your favorite one? Let's see. Earbuds, earbuds, earbuds. Wow. Hey, look at the earbuds here. I'm not going to talk about brands, or this is going to become a completely different session, but nice. Very cool. Well, it looks like the earbuds are definitely the, the chosen one. Wow, both. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Cool. And as you guys have seen, and I, I will start, uh, when I, I start sharing my screen in a second, here we are. Uh, you should be able to see my screen in a second. Uh, we're talking about service design. And the title of this session is, is service design one of the stranger things? So before we even get started, my question for you is, uh, have you guys seen uh, stranger things? Uh, and let me publish this poll here. And why don't you why don't you guys go on and vote and let me know if you did watch Stranger Things? I will close it like in a in a in a minute or so. Uh, spoiler alert! Of course, I watch it, and I think it was especially the last season was pretty okay. It was it was a uh, pretty cool. I I did like it. I'm not a fanatic, but I was trying to find a theme for this session to keep it like a little bit more engaging, and I found like Stranger Things to be interesting. And you'll find how uh, you'll find why in a minute. So okay, the votes are in. Let me see. Got enough. Got like uh, okay. Let's see. Last five questions. Last five se seconds to vote. Four, three, two, one. Let me close the poll. So, well, sixty percent of of the people here loved it. Nice. Uh, for the folks people for the folks here that said I don't know what is that. Is a TV show that was on Netflix. Uh, I think it was the fourth season. Uh, pretty entertaining. I recommend you to watch it. Uh, and uh, but don't worry, even if you have never seen Stranger Things, it's not a problem. You can still follow here the entire uh, presentation, and it won't be a problem. So great. Let me go back and close the poll here, uh, and go back. Can you guys see my presentation? Give me a check in the chat. I see a lot, a lot of thumbs up. Awesome. So let's get it started. First of all, I mean, we talk about Stranger Things, but let's talk about us. So I'll start with a little bit of my uh, who I am. My name is Federico Francioni, but I go for Fede. So please call me Fede. And as you can see from my profile, I define myself as a designagist. That is a combination of a designer and a strategist. That's uh, like uh, the most... Uh, interesting label that I could put on myself because I don't really like label. You can find me online as uh, Fedino82, uh, pretty much every surface, you can search for that. Uh, what I wanted to share with you is that, yes, I work as a um, head of uh, the digital ecosystem at Meta. I was at Microsoft before that, and I was at PwC for a, a good amount of, my, of years, uh, both in Italy and in the United States. And I don't have a portfolio. I don't. I don't believe that a portfolio, uh, you know, it's uh, the thing that we need to showcase uh, what we're capable of doing. So what I use is basically my website, federicofrancioni.com and designers.show. That is the podcast that I've been running for a couple of years. Now, without further ado, let's get into the core here and let's talk about service design. What the hell is service design? The definition, one of the definition of service design is uh, calling it a systemic design approach 
to align the goal, organizational structure, and capabilities of an ecosystem with the needs of its user and service providers by examining holistically all the touch point and the flows. This is pretty long, uh, and uh, it's uh, thank for loving the background. Uh, basically, it's like an intro. I know it sounds a little bit of BS. Uh, it sounds a little bit complex. Uh, so I was thinking, how can I explain uh, in a Stranger Things fashion what service design really is with a clear example? So let me do this. Before I press into the next slide, let me ask, do you guys see the slide clear or you see them a little bit dark? Because I got a little bit of dark here on the slide, but I want to make sure that you guys can see it like completely fine. OK, awesome. Thank you for the check. So you guys are very responsive. I love it. So here we are. That's the example that I will use to explain what service design is. Do you guys know what this is? Have you ever played this game? I see I've got a lot of heart. Mario, Mario, Super Mario. Yes, exactly. This is a, a Super Mario game. What do you think Super Mario has in common with service design? Anyone wants to guess? Let's see. Journey. You jump around a lot. Nice. User flow. Strategy, jumping through hoops. <laughs> this is awesome. End to end journey, I get ecosystem, obstacles, very interesting. Problem solving, nice. Okay, this is all, these are all pretty good. So let me take, give you a little bit of background. This is a, um, something that I took online, and uh, it's basically a sovereign impression of 974 people playing this level of Super Mario. And it was taken in 2013. Now, what is the reason why I'm showing you that? Is that, as you can see from the cues on the slide, when you have to take a look into what the end-to-end -end looks like, and that's one of the main characteristics of a service designer, you cannot rely only on a few different uh, looks or a few different persona. You need to take a step back uh, and make sure that you're able to understand what are the clear patterns that emerge from a scenario. Rule number one. So you don't, you don't have to stay attached to a slice of the cake or something very specific. You need to go take one step back and take a look at the whole thing at once. So when you look at 974 people playing the same level of Super Mario, everyone can look at this video and say, well, it almost looks the same. You can tell the patterns and what people do. Sure, there are some outliers, but by using this example, I hope that I'm giving you an idea of uh, what I mean when I say a service designer need to be able to tell the whole ecosystem story and taking a step back. It seems clear to say that if you were to use a single player action or just uh, having single entities, you won't be able to see any of that. So this is uh, like a nice, nice example to enter the description of a service design and, and what service design is. But Let's say if I were a Demogorgon, and for the people who haven't seen uh, Stranger Things, is like a very, I don't know, very fun monster here. And you're asking what, how yourself, OK, but what are the stages of the service design? Like, what, what are the things that you will study as a service designer? Then, well, there are three stages. So what I will answer my friendly Demogorgon is uh, basically the first part that everyone knows and everyone notice is the front stage. So imagine you go to like a theater or a cinema, you always get the, the front stage in front of you. That's all the audience see, right? That's where your customer, they go in, your user, and they have fun at the show. They see the performance and they have a lot of fun. That's one part that you need to analyze as one of the stages that a service designer curates. Nowadays, the front stage, especially for a designer, is the really fancy thing that everyone wants to do. Like think about a Super Bowl commercial, right? Think about like all the meta, Facebook, Instagram of the day. Everyone wants to play and work on the front end. That's what it is. But it's not all. Because a service designer always include the backstage. So the backstage part is where people are working on the costume, their people are directing the lights uh, and everything that makes uh, the front stage acting as it should be. 
So these are all the th all the things that you don't see in front of an audience. These are all the uh, buttons and things that people pushes to make the front stage works. Uh, and it's as important as the front stage because without the backstage, there is no performance, right? A lot of the time people get those services discounted, but it's very important to keep in mind that without a very, very solid backstage, there is no front stage. Okay, so you got the back and forth, you got the front stage, you got the backstage, what else is missing? Well, the third stage is the behind the scenes. So the behind the scenes are all the intangible things that an organization, a business, a company needs to do to make sure that everything else takes part and takes action. So when you think about contracts, so you think about timing, you think about the budgets, all the policies, right? All the, uh, the billing of the ticketing. These are all things that people execute, maybe in the headquarter, not even in the cinema, not even in the venue, that without those, there is no backstage and there is no front stage. So those three things uh, is literally the scope of a service designer that is completely different from the other uh, experienced designer that we usually see. Let me take a second so far. Let me see if there are any questions related to front stage, backstage, behind the scene. The demo Gorgon is very happy uh, of the performance because if the, if it's not happy about the, the, the performance, the demo Gorgon will probably eat the performer alive. So that's also very important to keep in mind. Cool. I think you guys are tracking. So the number one question that, that I got and I wanted to share it with you is, uh, okay, but we talk a lot about experience designer. We talk a lot about content designer product designer, visual designer, interaction designer, like all these terms, right? I would say that probably 90% of you guys, uh, maybe less in this session, are product designer, right? And I like to call everyone that is not a service designer an experienced designer. So the number one question I get is, what is the difference between a service designer and the experienced designer? What are, why are those two practices similar? Do they overlap? How does it work? The reality is that there is an overlap, but while the service designer mostly focus on the end-to-end -end journey and is a collection of all the journey that can be taken, so it's by nature holistic. So the keyword here is end-to-end -end and holistic. An experienced designer, it's most likely to focus on a part of the entire end-to-end -end process. So when you're thinking as an experienced designer, and let's use the most common example, you're a product designer. You might be someone that works on the ticketing, ticketing system. You might be someone that works uh, on uh, a presentation layer of an app, right? But you don't have the visibility of the end-to-end -end stage. That means that you are really hyper-focused on the depth of an experience. While as a service designer, we tend to be more focused on the breadth. In this little uh, visual that I got on the slide, you can see some um, blue lines that goes horizontal and vertical. So think about those blue slices as the scope of a typical experience designer. So you most likely are gonna work on different aspects of the front stage. You might be working on a, an application on the backstage, because some of the product designer work on backstage app as well, right? Think about all the people that design for Salesforce, right? Uh, that, that's typically like a backstage application, but it's nonetheless very important. This is usually the big difference. As a service designer, what we will probably do is like taking a look at each one of these rectangle and how they interact with each other. The one thing that I don't know you if you notice in here, and maybe can be a question, you might be asking, okay, I don't see any blue in the behind the scenes. The reason why I didn't put any blue slice in the behind the scenes is that typically behind the scenes are mostly processes and people doing processes. You don't really have application in that part. So there is technically nobody that design an application, a product or a service for the behind the scenes. So that's why you see that rectangle as empty.
Now, let's get into a clear example and talking about, again, the front stage and the, front, and the backstage uh, and how they interact with each other, interact with each other. If you were to go uh, into like a performance and you go to a concert, you might be experiencing A, your ticketing system. So I'm opening my app. I'm not calling any names of the app uh, that you have out there and you are buying your ticket. Then B, you go the day of the concert, you go there and you might have another app uh, or you might have a Wayfinder experience that tells you, okay, these are all the food truck that you can use this is where your seats are and you can go and interact with that, with that solution. And then during the performance, you may have like an interactive stage uh, that connects with your phone uh, and you do and play with your phone to interact with your performer while he or she are singing. This is all on the front stage. You may have experienced designer, product designer, um, visual designer, you can call it whatever you want, working on A, B, or C in a completely different silo. On the backstage, you will have people that work on the sound check. So all they care about is that the sound works clear and, and fine. You will find people that work on the makeup and the costume, and they take care of the performer. And you will have the number three that is your performer that gets the sound check, your performer gets and wears their costume, and it also gets all the makeup on and then moves up from the backstage on the front stage and performs. So the real key interaction here is C and three up on the front uh, of the front stage. But literally all the things that you've seen here, A, B, one and two, are literally foundational for the entire ecosystem to work. So that is what service design does is making sure that we have the A, the B, the C, the one, the two, and the threes, and they all work in a timely fashion, in a timely manner. So what are those? A, B, and C are experiences. But also one, two, and three are experiences, nonetheless. So together, the combination of all those experiences build a service. And that's the difference of the service designer between the service designer and an experienced designer. You may go very, again, very deep into each one of these letter or this number, or you may go very broad on how they interact with each other and what are the implications for all of them to work nicely. Let me take a 20 second pause and see if there are any questions related to this comparison between experience design, service design, and then we'll continue. Here we are, thank you. So we got Marvin that is asking, what is a good service designer to experience design ratio in a team? Oh, interesting. Based on my experience, I don't know if I can come out with a ratio because it really depends on the size of the company. You, I can totally tell you that there are way more experienced designer than service designer, 100%. There are probably, I would say in on a, an average big company, there might be something as one service designer every four or five experienced designer. And that's because when you think about any experience flow, there are usually multiple tools that you need to develop. Uh, and each one of these tools can be extremely specific. So those experienced designers ne really need to go deeper uh, and create something unique, uh, while you probably need less people to make sure that you connect all these dots uh, with the backstage and the behind the, sta the, behind the, behind the stage. So that might be my ratio, like let's say one to four, one to five for everything I've seen. Let me go and jump. Uh, we got a, for a few Q and A that will oh a few Q and A's that we can go let later at the end of uh, uh, here of the session. So basically, I hope that what I introduced to you is the fantastic world of service designer. So when someone will ask you 
what service design is. Uh, you can tell them that the service design is the combination of the front stage with the backstage and the behind the scenes. And I kind of like the service design with the Stranger Things logo, so I hope you guys appreciate it as well. Uh, now let's go a little bit deeper. Before we go there, though, I have another poll for you guys. And I would love to understand, uh, here we are. Let me see if you guys can see the poll. Can you guys see the poll on stage? Here we are. So I would like to understand how proficient are you in service design? So let's take a minute because now I, I kind of try and give you like the one-on-one, -on -one, but I, I would suppose there are people that might be familiar with service designer, people that might have worked with service designer, we might have service designer, or there might be people that are just confused and curious. So let's get some data. You know, I'm that kind of designer because I'm a designagist that loves data. I think that with data, we can really make very interesting and informed choices. So let's see where we are. Let's do 10 more seconds for your voting here. Seven, six, uh, four, three, two, one. And let's go and close the poll. Here we are. Let me see. So 58 votes and 12% of you have no idea what it is. Hopefully the last 15 minutes uh, give you like an explanation. Uh, so I hope it did. Uh, if it did, like give me a, th a thumbs up. Um, I know it's a discipline of design. Interesting, that's the great majority. 50% of you know that it's a discipline of design. That's good. Uh, Cause believe me, a lot of company don't even know what service design is. That still, I know it's 2022, but that's the case. It's part of what I do, but it's not in my title. That's interesting. Almost one third of you do some sort of service design. And that is very common, guys. So you are not alone. And again, I would say despite of the size of the company, there are a lot of people that are called UXR, so UX researcher, or they're called product designer, but what they do in, in, in fact uh, is also service design. And we have 7% of service design ninja. Yay, great. Uh, so you have to give me some, some advice because I, I love to be a service design ninja as well. Very cool. Good. So now let me go on to the next stage. If we're talking about becoming a service designer, right? So uh, unless you are a ninja, but even if you are a ninja, for all the other folks, uh, you might be asking yourself, okay, if I want to become a service designer or what would be your advice and what are the secret powers of a service designer, right? So what do I really need to master? If I have to pick four things, those will be these four here. Now, I'm not saying that to be a service designer, you only need to master those four. There are a bunch of uh, resources on the internet that you can see and check uh, to see what's, what does it need to be a service designer. But from my experience, if there are like four things that I want you guys to focus on, are these four. Design thinking session, service blueprints, ecosystem maps, and then strategy and storytelling. Now, let me start with the, the last one. Strategy and storytelling applies to everything that I call a maker. That is not even a designer. It's someone that makes things happen, right? So I'm not gonna discuss those in here. I do monthly group, in, group session on, on ADP list where I talk about strategy storytelling and it's called Beyond the Portfolio. So let's table it and please contact me and we can do one of these sessions in the future. Ecosystem maps are a representation of all the stakeholders and the tools that you have to deal with on the front end and on the back end. So that's what the ecosystem map is. It's a relatively easy concept, but it's not something that probably needs to drill down today. So I really want to go and talk to you in the remaining time that we have about design thinking session and service blueprint. So design thinking session is really core for every service designer. 
you have the tip stereotypical image of people putting sticky notes. I hate that. A design thinking session is not sticky notes on, on somewhere, whether it's physical or virtual. That's BS. A design thinking session is a collaborative workshop that is designed to, dr to drive two things. Outcomes that are intangible and outputs that are very, very tangible. This is not about having sticky notes uh, and do like look a little bit more modern. The art of having a design thinking session is not really an art, it's a science. And there is a method to that. So when you do a proper design thinking session, you do something where you go to your boss and basically you tell them, if we run this design thinking session, I'm gonna reduce the number of meeting by X percent. And we're probably gonna get to the final point much faster than we actually do, doing the typical and stereotypical process of interviews, one-on-one -on -one meeting, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the main value prop of a design thinking session. And a design thinking session is very holistic in nature and can be anything that you want. On a design thinking session, you can be a facilitator, a neutral facilitator of what happens, and you use subject matter expertise of the people that are coming to basically do what, whatever you think is the output and outcomes that you want to get. So for example, if you want to do concept ideation, you can do concept ideation. If you want to do requirements gathering for a product, you can do requirements gathering. As a service designer, you don't need to have any preference. You can make the design session do whatever you want. Let me do a little time check here. I know that we have like 13 minutes left, uh, if, I, if I get it right. So there are a couple of things that I want to add in here before uh, we get into the second part. A good design thinking session, keep in mind that has clear goals, as we stated, but it also has known goals and it has givens. Givens are the things that we know that are table stake before we get into this meeting. To be productive, we need to have those givens. And known goals are as important as goals because you don't want a lot of people to come in a room and be confused on what they need to get done. Again, there is a method. So setting your known goals is as important as setting your goals. Another few advice that I want to share with you is the flow of a design thinking session is incredibly important. You can design the flow to go up and down as a storytelling to make people feel in a certain way. And the kind of activities that you do and the format is also very important. You can have plenary session, you can have breakout, you can have breakout, you can have like fishbowl. There's a lot of like different formats that you can play in a design thinking session to make it successful and really even play with the emotion of the people that are part of that. And the last piece of advice I want to give about the design thinking session is you are going to get a lot of raw data in a design thinking session and people need to be okay with that. So raw data is what you get throughout the design thinking session, but it's very important that you create a follow-up when the design thinking session is over. Otherwise, people will only see that they've done sticky notes. So the follow-up to a design thinking session is very quintessential for the success of the overall initiative. That is number one. Number two, service blueprint. This is basically the typical concept of a journey on steroids. A service blueprint is a visualization of how a service worker, not only on the front end, but also on the back end and the behind the scenes that we just discussed. The blueprint displays the entire process of the service delivery. So you have all the possible activities that you can, you can see. So it's not led by one person, like a typical journey that goes throughout a series of stages. It's the process that is in control. So at the very top, uh, you don't have a person going through, but you have a process that you go through. What is very important about a service blueprint that differentiate it from, yes, it's from Nielsen Norma Group. Uh, yes, uh, Megan. Uh, I, and I will share the deck so you can see, uh, you, you have access to all the links in here. So this multi-layer journey-like framework, uh, it's just a typical representation of what a service blueprint is. Uh, it doesn't have to be like this one here. 
So one key message that I want to give to all the people here that want to be service designer, that are service designer, or want to understand more about service designer, is that this typical multi-layer approach is not the one size fits all. You have to think very outside of the box. Sometimes you have to use maybe something that looks like a periodic table. Sometimes you'll have to use something like a matrix. So you have to be creative and always serve your final stakeholder. It's whatever you need to represent the ecosystem that wins. The multi-layer that you see here from Nils and Norman is just one of the best practice. So again, service blueprint and design thinking session are the two key things. Before we get into the Q&A, I will leave you with this one here. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a framework that I designed a few uh, months ago with Raffaele Vitale. That is the person that does the podcast designers with me. And pretty much we were trying to put together the five dimension of design. Uh, this is one of the frameworks that we develop in Figma. Again, we can share all of them for free with you. I mean, uh, like uh, my number one mission is that I don't want any money for any of the mentoring session that I do or all these things uh, is for people to consume and improve. Uh, so here is a little bit of a recap of what I think the dimension of design is and where solution design, service design, and the different areas of experience design for. So that is was all the content that I want to share with you. I want to thank you in advance. And yes, you can also be able to use this presentation and template for free. I will share everything after the session through ADP list. But let's go to the nitty gritty. Let's do the Q&A. So let me go on the Q&A and yes, let's go. You mentioned not having a portfolio. Did that change the types of job you applied to since a lot of them ask for one? Um, it kind of did, but the other way around, uh, Charmy, if I, I hope you pronounce your name right. I, I've always been very picky on the kind of work that I wanna do. So of course, if that position requires to have a portfolio, I did provide a portfolio. I'm just saying that the kind of portfolio that I provided is not the typical portfolio that everyone else is doing. So it's just a risk that I was taking because, uh, and I, I can speak about that in my beyond, beyond the portfolio session and let, let ping me outside so we can talk offline about that. I think that a portfolio needs to represent yourself. You have to be proud of your portfolio. So the fact that you have a portfolio that is standard doesn't make you any different from other folks. I want to be proud of my portfolio. So I'm going to build my portfolio in the way I think is more valuable to me. Uh, Hope that answer your question. Uh, next one. How can someone embed service design across an organization? Oh, fantastic question. Uh, you need to prove the value of service design. You need to explain to them basically the same approach that I was trying to share with you a few minutes ago. You need to tell them that if you only think product, 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 you are creating silo. You need to have some people that don't have any skin in the game of product uh, to be more holistic. Let me give you an example. If you're a product manager, you are building the future of your product. I've never met a product manager that says, I want to kill my product, right? Because they don't want to. You have a team that you want to nurture, right? But as a service designer, I'm not looking into killing products, right? I'm trying to make sure that those products can merge, combine, or simplify into the best experience possible. So by having someone that thinks about service design and thinks holistically, that's the value that you bring. Uh, next, how does one transition from product design to service design? You need to develop those skills that I was, uh, we were talking about, and you need to start thinking more holistically about uh, what is the value that you want to bring uh, in, in an organization. So usually service designer tend to be a little bit more senior than an average product design. Again, I don't want to generalize, but uh, usually service designer to, to have an experience that they've been through on different stages, on different front end and back end, so they can speak to both. So my number one um, advice would be make sure that you don't only focus on customer and external facing tool but you get some experience on the back end so you can speak to those. Zalada. What is the best way to work with 
and define processes between service design and product design. Collaboration. Talk to those people and do what is called a RACI, R-A-C-I, that is basically a matrix that defines uh, the roles and responsibility of the entire team. That's what I've been building, even at Meta, with all the product designers that work with me, all the UXR, all the content designer. I've been sitting with my peers and I've been uh, literally asking themselves, okay, where do you think there is an overlap? Where do you think there is a synergy? What are the things that we believe we're both doing? And what are the things that we're not doing and that makes us unique? So if you start with collaboration and uh, defining those roles and responsibility with them, it's always the best, the best way. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. So you can tell the UXR that they can do all the card sorting, usability, et cetera, and maybe the service design can do the mental model and the initial research, right? You can have the product designer work on everything, Figma and I fidelity screen, and you can have the service designer think more about the wireframing, for example. These are just examples. This can be something that you can start brainstorming with your peers. Julie. Yeah, crazy. Thank you for spelling that out. Mario, did you study service design for your master's uh, or self-taught? Uh, okay. I am a telecommunication engineer. I never practiced telecommunication engineer one day in my life. I'm a huge hybrid. And that's why I think I'm a service designer because I can speak to the technology part. I did develop my love for experience design through the course of the year. And I combine them. That's why I'm a service designer. That's why I call myself a designagist because I'm in love with the strategic aspect so I can speak to the business. I can translate them into things that technology can understand. So no, I did not study service designer, service design, and but it's very cool that you can do that at university today. So I wish. Where you draw the distinction between service design and strategic design? They're very similar. You can argue that there is strategy in all the aspects of design. Even if you do experience design, so even if you go vertical, you need strategy. Strategy is everywhere. Whoever design without a strategy is not a real designer. You need to be very result-oriented to be a designer. That's why I call them maker. If you are a maker, you know you want to make something. In order to make something, you need a strategy. Otherwise, you're doing random stuff. You're just drawing, right? That's the difference between a maker and a drawer. So you are always strategizing on where you want to go, and you're put together a, a vision that you want to go for and a series of steps for you to take into action and execute. So there is not a real distinction between service design and strategic design. I would say there is strategic design in every design step. Julie, I think that, okay, time check themes. This is the last question from Zlada. Some of the service design work may overlap with PMs. Yes. How do you define the scope between the two roles? Again, very similar. It's collaboration. The PM scope, because they're product, is usually focused on the product strategy. So if I'm working on the ticketing system, I'm thinking how can I make the ticketing better? And maybe how can I move the ticketing on multiple surfaces, right? So mobile, desktop, uh, how can I make the flow easier? How can I incorporate security? This is typical stuff that a PM does. But when you think service designer, I'm connecting the ticketing, again, with the interactive part of the stage, with the uh, experience after the event. So I'm connecting all the different PMs that work in those different aspects uh, to draw an end-to-end -end experience flow. I think that was the last question. Thank you again. If you guys uh, uh, want to discuss uh, uh, outside of this one, please feel free to reach out. You know where to find me, Fedino82, ADP List. It was awesome. Thank you for all the collaboration and enjoy the rest of Be More. Thank you, guys. Ciao.